previously on L.A. Law. God, that turns me on. I live with someone, and I love her, and I can't... I won't hurt her. And I promise you what happened yeah. between Arnie and me will never happen again. Oh, what do you mean, what happened between you? I'm not denying I enjoyed the seduction, but to tell you the truth, I'm just too old-fashioned to get involved with Arnie. I'm drowning in paperwork here. Why don't I hire Sarah? Hiring family members can get pretty messy. Well, we're family. We work together. That's not the same thing at all. You don't even know Sarah yet. Yeah, so this way I'll get to know her. You know, he's not paying me to work. He's paying me to be his instant daughter. Wait a minute. You came here looking for your father. You found a generous, good man who's willing to give more than anybody I know. Don't you dare take this job or anything else from him unless you're willing to give back. No way Judge Kelton's crooked. Who's this guy? The next cop. He's a friend of Kelton's. He can make it go away. Gentlemen, before we continue with the calendar, I have decided to reconsider Mr. De Palma's earlier motion to suppress. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'll cut you in, huh? I'll find another 20 for you. Louise, there's no other way. We gotta report this. No, Alex, you don't. What are you talking about? The DA already knows. Your Honor, you're charged with violating Penal Code 368, asking and receiving a bribe by a state appointee. I have done nothing wrong. And whoever is responsible for this outrage, I promise you, I will remain on this bench, if only to make sure that you never practice law again. Sorry about the time out. I have a granddaddy of all heartburns. So, you've been trying to talk things over with Roxanne. Yeah, but she just shuts me down. She won't even think about it. How, how do I get her to listen to me, to believe me? Arnie, why don't you agree to go to Julie's apartment? Because I, uh, wanted to. I wanted her. But you didn't follow through. That's a first for you. It's real progress. What the hell kind of progress is it when I lose the woman that I love? You know, the worst thing is, part of me is relieved. Part of me wants to go back there, sleep with Julie, sleep with anybody I want to. Best of all, it wasn't my fault. I didn't fall off the wagon this time. At least I can enjoy myself with a clear conscience. <sighs> Except for one thing. I still love Roxanne. I miss her and I want her back. God, I really feel terrible. Yeah, me too. Doc? Dr. Birch? This is just great. Now I'm gonna have to establish intimacy with a whole new guy.
I see where Mr. De Palma has a new client, Nelson Quinn. Quinn's a jeweler under investigation for stealing gems, substituting fake stones in their place. No charges have been filed yet. We're meeting with prosecutors today. Another sting job for the DA? Please, once was enough. Oh, and what is happening with our old friend, Judge Kelton? He's always handling the case for the DA. She thinks he'll plead. I would have thought he was crooked. After 22 years of exemplary service. From what I've heard, a lot of judges feel that Kelton was entrapped. Well, let Zoe worry about that. Alex, I'd like a word with you after the meeting. Sure, no problem. That leaves us with Brackman versus Brackman. What's going on, Douglas? Sheila's looking to modify child support. On what grounds? I'll spare us all the gory details. Suffice it to say that if Sheila could legally find a way to remove my spleen with a dull spoon, she'd do it. <laughs> and on that note... Sorry to bust in on you. I'll only stay long enough to invite you all to the biggest event of the season. Dodger tickets? Bigger. My wedding. Friday afternoon, 3 o'clock, my place. Kids and animals welcome. Don't worry about RSVPing. I will not take no for an answer. You're getting married? Does the groom know? Lee, this must be a real blow to you. But you had your chance, sweetie. Hard to get just doesn't work for me. Look, I'm late for a trousseau fitting. Ciao, babies. Maybe he's gay. Or comatose. Still my works. mother always used to say there's a lid for every pot. That must be some lid. Oh. Now, that unsettling thought. We're adjourned. This sting operation you took part in. Now, I know you acted with the best intentions, and I applaud your willingness to help the DA. But... But you should have come to me first. You have a duty to apprise this firm before taking on any outside commitments, especially in delicate situations like this one. The DA swore me to secrecy. You solicited a bribe from the judge's intermediary before you knew the DA was involved. I had to meet with Ventresca. How else could I know if Kelton was for sale? You were a potential target of this sting. That meeting alone could have resulted in your arrest, possible disbarment. It was a calculated risk on behalf of my client. It was a foolish risk that exposed this entire firm to potentially serious consequences. Well, if you ask me, things turned out pretty well. Alex De Palmer is not a law unto himself. You are a member of this firm. You can call on the talent and resources here, but in return, you have a responsibility to let the people here know just what the hell you're up to. That it? That's it. This has got to stop. Flowers, candy, fortune cookies with apologies inside them. You are not going to buy back my affection. I'm not trying to buy anything, Rox. I, I just want you to know how sorry I, I am. I agree, you're pretty sorry. Look, I'm in a vulnerable place right now. If you cannot relate to me in a professional context, tell me now, and I will give Douglas my resignation. Otherwise, leave me alone. they say they're gonna charge you but i didn't take those stones my partner did he set me up and now i'm going to jail no you're not since you were cooperative and you came in voluntarily they're letting you go or until your bail hearing day after tomorrow i can go home yeah but first the detective's gonna take you across the street to get pictures and prints oh god relax it's painless you'll be in and out in 15 minutes alex uh, excuse me. We're going to need your testimony at the prelim tomorrow. Kelton wouldn't roll over. Wonderful. What about my case? Don't we need to prepare? We'll have plenty of time after we set your bail. Prelim, 1.30. I'll be there. Thank you. Hi. Ready, Mr. Quinn? It's okay. It's okay. Now, one sec. Judge. Mr. De Palma, I know this is highly irregular, but it's important I speak with you. Look, I'm a prosecution witness. I'm really not comfortable this having... This has nothing to do with my case. This is personal. Mr. De Palma, please. Mr. De Palma, there is no way that, that you could possibly fathom the humiliation that this episode has caused me and my family, but you, you've only seen a tiny corner of the picture. 
And there are certain things about me that I think that you should know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't hear this. Not without your lawyer present. Mr. De Palma, you owe me this much. I've never been a religious man, but all my life I have felt the presence of a moral center that I could always refer to for guidance. Last year, my wife fell critically ill, Mr. De Palma. Judge Kelton. I've watched the woman that I love for 30 years waste away. Half the time, she doesn't even recognize me. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but the pressure of her illnesses have led me to behave in ways that I now see were aberrant. I lost sight of myself. Now, perhaps if I had, had looked for professional help. I'm I'm sorry about all this, too, Judge Kelton. I am. But I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Mr. De Palma, I have a daughter who's just about your age. She's in a third year of law school. Oh, God. How could it come to this? <gasps> Can I, uh, call someone to take you home? No. No, that won't be necessary. I I apologize. Uh... Stuart, is that you? It's me, Ann. Ned? I got my term paper. Where's Stuart? Working late again. I just got Matthew off to sleep. Want me to hang around? No, thanks. I'm fine. You go on home. Anne, I hope I'm not out of line, but I noticed a little tension between you and Stuart. Is everything all right? You mean aside from the fact that his 16-year-old daughter has appeared out of nowhere and is totally disrupting our lives? That bad? I just have to get used to the idea that it'll never be the same for us now that Sarah's come along. Can you do that? I don't know. Ned, have you been drinking? I had a few beers. I'm not drunk, but maybe I am just loose enough to show you how I really feel. We had an agreement. You said you weren't going to do this again. And you deserve better than... You listen to me. Stuart Markowitz is the best thing that ever happened. Do you actually think I could choose some love-struck boy over the man that I have built my life with, had my son with? I am not a love-struck boy. Get out! What about Matthew? That's no longer your concern. You're fired. Yeah, I second the motion. And if I ever see your face around my wife again, I'll turn it into a coaster. Now get out of here. Let's go. You want how much more? 5,000 a month is not unreasonable. If you're a rock star, if you're Walter Annenberg, but if you're me, it damn well is unreasonable. You Mr. Brackman, please. You parsimonious piece of phlegm. You are name-calling, try this, profligate, extravagant, spin Arnie, come You're on. You're gonna have to demonstrate need, Sheila, not want. Fine. You wanna talk need? Let's talk about Alexander's therapy sessions. Three times a week, 120 a session. That's 1,500 a month right there. Three times a week? Jeffrey Dahmer doesn't need three times a week. And this, 300 a week for private tutoring in math and English? This is necessary? For God's sakes, he gets straight A's in math. Nations have risen and fallen since he got an A in math. This isn't about Alexander. It's about Veronica. You're gouging me for sleeping with your sister. That's out of well, line. Well, this is about Alexander. Last week, I found empty beer cans in Oh, let's in his call room. in the FBI. What the hell is your problem? How do you know those weren't his brother's beer cans? I could believe that of him, but Alexander? What do you know about Alexander? You get him twice a month, a weekend here and there, but you don't live with him. You don't know him. I could do a hell of a lot better job of raising him than you. Oh, you think so? Just give him to me for two weeks. I'll prove it. Douglas, wait a minute. If during that time I see some evidence of these grave transgressions, You'll get your money. Douglas, Sheila, if you not, shouldn't. you don't get another dime. Agreed? Pick him up tonight. Seven o'clock. Fine. Women, all you have to do is call their bluff.
Hi. I need Arnie to take a look at this custody agreement. The paternal grandparents are involved. Sure. How's the nanny home going? Oh, unbelievable. Actually, we have a lead on a good one. Maritza from Guatemala. We're going to see her this afternoon. Oh, great. Matthew's such a sweet little... Wow. Oh, my. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Who is that? Mikhail! Susie. I'd give up chocolate if I could have one of those eight or nine times a day. <laughs> Susie, we should go. I picked out some wonderful rings I think you might like. Adios, muchachos. You catch flies that way. I give it six months. Six months? I give it six weeks? Come on. Two years and a day. Immigration scam. They've got to stay married at least two years to guarantee his residency. You are all so jaded. Have you considered they may actually be in love? <laughs> and when you turned the $50,000 over to Mr. Ventresco, what did he say? He said he was sure I'd be hearing from him again. One last question, Mr. De Palma. Have you spoken with Judge Kelton since his arrest? Yes, last night. He came to my apartment. He wanted to talk. What did he say? He mentioned some personal problems he'd been having, at which point I asked him to leave. You then reported your meeting to the district attorney's office. After consulting with my law firm, yes, I reported it to you. Thank you, Mr. De Palma. I have nothing further. You may step down. Your Honor, if this concludes the evidence against Judge Kelton, I move for immediate dismissal of all charges. On what grounds? Your Honor, this so-called investigation relied on false representations to the court to coerce an innocent man into breaking the law. There's no coercion here. Judge Kelton, through his agent, initiated contact with our undercover officer. We merely constructed a sting to expose the judge's bribe-taking. They filed a phony indictment against a cop posing as a drug defendant. A cop who knowingly gave false testimony at his arraignment and prelim. That is a fraud on the court. If a crooked judge isn't a fraud on the court, I don't know what is. Maybe so, Miss Thomas. But what kind of example does it set when the district attorney enforces the law by arguably breaking the law? Your Honor. There is no other way to get at a judge without creating this kind of scenario. But the kind of behavior your office engaged in runs the risk of discrediting the judicial system. It breeds contempt for the law. However, the idea that a judge could sell his position and not be held accountable is even more reprehensible. Therefore, I deny defense counsel's motion and order that Judge Kelton stand trial for bribery. This court is adjourned. You busy, Lee? Yes, but that's not gonna stop you, is Actually, it? Actually, I need to ask your favor. Whatever it is, the answer is no. I'm seriously. This marriage thing has uh, been a big decision for me. I don't take commitment lightly, and I want you to be the one to give me away. What? You're a stand-up kind of guy. Honest, honorable. Kind of how I always imagined my father would be if he hadn't been such a philandering schnook. <laughs> You'd lend dignity to the proceeding. Look, I may be a lot of things, but I am not stupid, and I am not blind. I know what people are saying. Why would anyone, let alone a handsome young hunk, want to marry loud, obnoxious Susan Bloom? Oh, oh, oh I'm sure they're just uh, surprised that you're interested in marriage. No, they just can't believe they could really love me. Oh, do you care for them? So much it scares the hell out of me. I have absolutely no reason to believe that anything you're telling me is the truth. No, you don't. But it is. All right. I'll probably regret this, but I'll do it. Oh, great. Thanks, Lee. Mm. Susan. Congratulations. You wanted to see me? I did. I thought you'd be interested to know that after your performance on the stand today, Judge Kelton copped to the bribery charge. He's off the bench for good. And you won't have to testify at his trial. Amen. And in appreciation of your distinguished service to this office above and beyond the call and all that, this is for you. What is it? My home phone number. Well, not many have it. The mayor does, the chief of police, my secretary, and now you. <laughs> If there's ever an emergency and you need a friend high up in the DA's office, I owe you one.
Thanks. It's only good ones. Choose your favor wisely. Hi. Hi. Something wrong? Oh, Roxanne and I split up a couple of days ago. Oh, God, Arnie, I'm sorry. It wasn't because Julie, of... Julie, save it for someone who cares. Excuse me? You lied to her. You told her that we slept together. What? I never... Julie, don't kid a kiddo. When it comes to liars, you're talking to the best. Why would you do it? I don't know. I've never done anything like it before. So far this year. Oh, God, Arnie, I know what I did. I know it was cheap and underhanded. I knew it when I was doing it, and I didn't care. Haven't you ever wanted someone so badly that you didn't care how you got them? And I wouldn't have done it if I hadn't thought somehow some part of you wanted me to do it. Was I right? Maybe. Can I call you? Maybe. See you at the studio. You were gone a long time. Bad case of the runs. Curse of the Brockman Constitution. I thought we might go over your math homework tonight. I understand you've been having a little trouble. I suck at math. Give me those. So, how are your other subjects? I got an A minus in biology. Well, if that's where your strength lies, maybe one day you could be a scientist or a doctor. I want to be a mortician. A mortician? Yeah. Laszlo Marx is that. He runs his funeral home. We go there after school. It is really cool. And I've already had a lot of practice dissecting. You dissect dead bodies? Oh, I wish. See, I have to practice on animals. I set up this little lab in my room. Squirrels are my favorite. I have to trap them first. See? Here's a skull. Oh, you want to hold it? Not at the table, son. This is where the eyes go in here. Put it away. Put it away. Douglas Brackman? Bernie! I thought it was you. Good to see you. I'm sitting with a table full of Japanese that I'd like you to meet. Maybe they can throw a little yen your way. Is this your boy? My son, Alexander. What's he got there? Nothing. A toy. I'd love to meet these friends of yours. Put that away. No slouching. What is it? Fire in the men's room. No need to panic. Everyone can please evacuate the rest of the Not only fashion. Right this way. It's your time. I don't know what to say. Say you believe me. I believe you. Anything else? Arnie, I, I need some time to think about all this. What's to think about? She was lying. Doesn't it bother you that I was so quick to believe her? Does it bother you? Yes, it does. What does it say about us? I don't care. I love you, Rox. I want you back. Let me sort this out.
Your Honor, given that Mr. Quinn has no record of any kind, has a home and family, and poses no flight risk, we ask he be released OR pending trial. Ms. Peters. Mr. Quinn is being charged with stealing over $150,000 worth of precious stones. Given this, we believe he does pose a flight risk and recommend bail at $40,000. I agree with the district attorney. If convicted, the defendant could spend four years in the state pen. That's plenty of incentive to skip out on $40,000. Accordingly, I'm going to raise bail to $100,000. Your Honor, I ask you to reconsider. There is no indication. Denied. I've made my ruling. Sidebar, Your Honor. What's going on here? A hundred thousand is absurd. My client has cooperated with the DA and came here today voluntarily. You think just because your guy is charged with a white collar crime, it's not serious? Of course not. But the DA would be happy with forty, and there's no way he can raise more than that. Then I guess he's going to jail. Step back, Mr. De Palma. Your Honor, this is outrageous. You raise your voice again. I'm holding you in contempt. You'll get no special consideration from this judge. Is that clear? The defendant will be remanded into custody. Next case. You said this Berkeley, wouldn't happen. Nelson, I'll talk to the bondsman. Hang in there. <laughs> Hang in there. Deputy District Attorney. Boy, what did he have for breakfast? Council Me. Parents from Berkeley. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to seek a continuance of this matter. The file will be on your desk. Start of business tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, goodbye. I only have a little more to copy, and then I can call the messenger service. No, look, look, you have a test tomorrow. I'll take care of it. You go home. And I'm doing it again, aren't I? Yeah. Sorry. Don't mind me, you keep working. Work, work, work! <laughs> Hi. Hi. Listen, Sarah, thanks for taking the filings to the courthouse for me. Sure. No problem. Excuse me. She's really a good kid. I know. So maybe things are going to start to settle down around here? Maybe. And at home, too. Did you see how Maritza and Matthew were this morning? He likes her better than he liked Ned. Yeah, he's not the only one. So do you think you might make it home for dinner tonight? No, I thought I'd wait and see if the gardener made a move on you first. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not getting enough affection at home. Obviously. Come. I got a problem. I heard about Judge Lowell today. That was just the beginning. Then I went before Judge Drabeck to get an extension to find a key witness. He denied my motion out of hand and moved up the trial date. I don't get the connection. I helped nail a judge, and now they're out to punish me. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Two judges rule against you, and you think that means that's a conspiracy? My former clients sure as hell think it does. Two of them dumped me because they heard I'm a marked man. Quinn's hanging by a thread. I'm starting to feel like a leper. All right, just calm down now. I don't doubt that there may be a misperception out there, but I can't believe that these judges are out to get you. I'm not imagining this. Maybe I should just hand over my criminal cases to Jonathan and Grace till this blows over. Uh-uh. Do that, you look desperate. Then you really start losing clients. Just don't overreact. Concentrate on representing your people as best you can. In the meantime, I'll look into this other thing. And even if there's something to it, I don't want you obsessing about it. Now, I'm serious. You keep your head in the game. noticed the switch a week after you returned from your vacation? That's right. 150,000 worth of fine Ceylon sapphires, gone. And in their place, 50 bucks worth of cubic zirconia crystals. Do you believe your partner Nelson Quinn stole those, Objection. Gems? Speculative. His belief is irrelevant. Overruled. There's no jury here. I want to hear his answer. Yes, I believe he took the stones. And what is the basis for your belief? My secretary told me that a customer overheard Nelson ordering the fakes. Objection. Double hearsay. Move to strike. She's just laying foundation. Deny. Your Honor, you can't lay foundation on improper hearsay. You're overruled, Counselor. The answer stands. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Your witness. Your Honor, Leland McKenzie, Mackenzie Brackman. With your permission, I'd like to join Mr. De Palma, a second chair. By all means, have a seat. Mr. Reed, you didn't see your partner steal these gems, did you? Like I said, I was on vacation. 
No one else was Mr. there. Mr. Reed. He was the only one with the know-how and access Objection, to do the switch. Objection, non-responsive. Your Honor, I respectfully ask that you instruct the witness to limit his answers to the questions put forth and move that his last remarks be stricken from the record. Denied. Mr. Reed, you said Mr. Quinn was the only one with access to these sapphires, but you had access too, didn't you? Irrelevant. The witness is not on trial here. Sustained. Your Honor, counsel has every right to ask that the... Who's conducting the examination here, you or Mr. De Palma? The question goes directly to the credibility of the witness. I've made my ruling, Mr. McKenzie. The objection is sustained. Your Honor, might we have a brief conference in chambers? What's this all about? I think you know. You just quashed half a dozen legitimate objections by Mr. De Palma. I abide by the rules of evidence. You know him better than that. What are you saying? You're sabotaging my case. Mr. McKenzie, you tell your co-counsel he makes another reckless charge like that, I'll bounce his ass in jail. You do, and you better reserve a cell for me, Don't too. Don't think I won't. Just how far are you going to take this? I can understand that you believe your colleague was taken down unfairly. But it was the district attorney's operation, not Mr. De Palma's. To blame him only compounds one judicial error with another. Your Honor, I never felt anything but respect for Judge Kelton. I didn't want to believe he was dirty either, but the fact is he took the money. I resent what's being implied here. Well, I suppose we could be drawing the wrong conclusion. Maybe Mr. De Palma's run of bad luck is nothing more than that. But if I do see any judge treating him with prejudice, I won't hesitate to file a claim of misconduct with the Committee on Judicial Performance. And anyone with any ambition to hire a judicial office should consider that it's people like me who make recommendations before such appointments are made. I appreciate your input, but there's no prejudice in my court. Now that we've got that off our chests, let's get back to work. Good. Come on, we've got a client to defend. It shouldn't be too late tonight, Marissa. The wedding starts at 3. Matthew, we hope, we hope to win. I have a wonderful gift Excuse me. for you. Are you Maritza Delano? See? Si. I'm Ann Kelsey. This is my house. What's going on? Agent Gruber, this is Agent Sanchez, Immigration and Naturalization Service. We see your identification and your work permit, Mrs. Delano. Senora. Let's go. Uh, wait a minute. No. Do you have a warrant? No. Why don't you and your son just go inside, Mrs. Kelsey, and let us do our job? Excuse me. Excuse me. I am an attorney oh. agent. This is not a police state. We have civilized procedures to handle this sort of thing. The INS believes Mrs. Delano is in this country illegally. If she can't produce legitimate ID, she'll be deported. Millions of dollars of drugs flowing across our borders, and you guys are out rousting nannies. Step aside, Mrs. Don't Kelsey. Don't you threaten me. Senor, ayúdame, por favor. You're under arrest. Mrs. Are Kelsey, obstructing me? justice what? and suspicion oh, of employing illegal aliens. The Constitution, for God's sake, the Bill of Rights. Oh, Don't cry, sweetie. We're just going for a ride with these nice men. Ah. It's okay. see Luke Perry. Well, she should be here by now. Would Luke Perry really come to your friend's wedding? Who's that? Somebody to go to school? You related to that guy? He's my foster dad. I'm with Chrome Dome. You're the kid with the fancy birthday watch. Yeah, how'd you know? I borrowed it from your dad for a while. I wanted to make sure it was waterproof. <laughs> you, uh, want to hang with the fossils? Or if you've got a better idea. Come on. Thanks for helping out today. Oh, my pleasure. Felt good to be back in the courtroom. Well, your client's out on bail. Hopefully, this heralds a thaw in your relations with the judiciary. I'm not too sure. Nelson called me from Tijuana. I think he skipped out with the stolen gems. Sam. Arnie, just because you said no this time doesn't mean you won't say yes next time. Doesn't mean I will say yes either. I know. But I just can't live with this hanging over my head. 
wondering if you really are working late, if that business lunch at Rondo's is a nooner at the Hyatt. I love you, Arnie, but I don't think I can ever really trust you. Is there anything I can do to make you change your mind? We've got too much history between us to be anything but friends. If you still want to be. I've lived in five homes over the last 12 years. I've gone to bed with dozens of women. <laughs> I can't remember half their faces. You were the only constant in my life, Roxanne. I don't want to lose that. You need someone new. You need someone to, to see you as you are, not as you were. I love you, Rox. I really do. I love you. Me too. Way to Guatemala by now. What? Maritza was in this country illegally. Maritza, what's she gonna do? We didn't do it. Hey. Just take it in stride, Lee. You're in the big leagues here. Come on, let's go. Susan and Mikhail, we have all come here today not only to wish you well on your new life, but to celebrate the wonder and the power of love. The bride and groom have written their own vows. Mikhail? Susie, my English isn't perfect yet, but you have taught me the meaning of the most important words. Love, trust, and joy. I'm yours, Susie. Whatever. Mikhail, I never thought I'd do this. And then I met you. You make me feel precious, like I'm the only one. And you make me want to make you feel that way, too. I plan to spend the rest of my life doing that. I love you, babe. Susan, Mikhail, with these vows, you give yourselves to one another, for now and always, in good times and in bad. It is with great pleasure that I pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations. You may kiss the bride. Just remember 
You want to finish? Yeah, it's got taste. Okay. Music's faster now. I'm not very good at that kind of dancing. Well, you're pretty good at this kind. We haven't seen you around the office much lately. Well, the Flanagan case was a real backbreaker. But my schedule looks pretty open for the next couple of weeks. Think you might be available? Stone from the fumes. Sam, come here. Alexander. Alexander. Alexander! To us and our future years together. You're incredible today, Susie. I had you to inspire me. I promise not to disappoint you. That's quite a promise. After all you've done for me to stay in this country, how could I do any less? I'm exhausted. Me too. I'll see you for breakfast. I'll be here. Sleep well. 